Hello everyone, and this is Berg Productions with another episode of an educational series. Today's episode is episode 3, Old Technology versus New Technology. Let's go ahead and start this, shall we? Old Technology, a timeless treasure of sorts that are being forgotten in modern times compared to the generations preceding it. New Technology, a force in which a good chunk of the world relies on for information sources. Why is new technology overshadowing old technology? We will elaborate on this as time goes by, but let's analyze the proper definition. The definition of technology is the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes, especially in industry. Technology has come a long way for man since God created the earth thousands of years ago. There are certain technological inventions that are old, but still we use. For example, we use wheels for chairs, cars, bicycles, grocery carts, and games. In all cases, the wheels spin. In my day, seeing wheels spin was pretty fun, and to some, it is still fun to this day. Another example of a technological evolution is the cash register. The United States Civil War veterans James Riddy and John Birch invented the cash register to protect their saloon from employees taking money away out from underneath them. That's right, a lot of theft occurred after the Civil War due to the fact that jobs were scarce. Today cash registers are controlled by a computer, which I will discuss about the computer later. I see flaws in the modern day cash register because if the power goes out prior to the checker making a sale then the cash register will not operate by any means. Another old school technological invention was the seed cleaning machine. Why was this machine important? Because farmers in the old days after hours of harvesting would save their best seeds, clean it, and dry it for the next planting season. It was a way for farmers to feed the country and feed themselves in the long run. What killed the seed cleaning business? Numerous seed companies. Why would I say something like that? Because seeds were being offered to new generation farmers, 20th century farmers, that was getting into new technological advances. Also, new generation gardeners were buying seeds from the companies instead of the farmers. What makes it even worse is that the supermarkets were booming in the 1950s. Due to the fact that society as a whole was changing due to the American dream, the seed cleaning industry was basically obsolete. When the supermarkets entered the lives of American people, so many farming machines from the 19th century, including old processing mills, were considered obsolete due to rapid machinery that doubled results in half the time. Many of them did rely on electricity rather than manual labor. Whatever the case is, we basically lost touch with common sense. Now to one of my favorite parts of this episode, acoustic technology versus electric technology. While I do love rock and roll, genres like bluegrass, jazz, and classical have been acoustic. Granted that jazz has electricity for certain instruments. Most of the time it still holds true to acoustics. The piano was invented by Bartolomeo Cristofori of Padua, Italy in 1698. The purpose of a piano was to balance the loudness and control so large crowds could enjoy the music without either wondering where the music is from a clavichord or having their ears bleed from the harpsichord. It was pretty good technology for the time and is still widely regarded as a great instrument. Today we have electronic keyboards that almost perfect the sounds of the piano, harpsichord, and clavichord. Fine and dandy, but if the keyboard malfunctions, you are pretty much without music. Here's my opinion. It's more expensive to buy a keyboard than a piano because with a real piano, you can tune it, replace the strings and strengthen the keys so they play well. A keyboard would leave you in the dark, especially if you have a critical performance coming up. But to continue this point, acoustic guitars have impacted the world for over a thousand years. 
There have been variations in evolution in the history of the guitar. I love the sounds of an acoustic guitar, but then there are people that want the loudness that rock and roll plus death metal combine. To me, if you play the blues, bluegrass, or folk songs with an acoustic guitar, you'll have music to last you until the end of time. Music has come a long way away from signing hymns. What the guitar, horns, and piano did was change the face of music and has made music in general very enjoyable. Hymnals from hundreds of years ago used the piano to worship Jesus. Does Jesus find musical instruments like the piano good for helping lift the spirit of those that are starting their morning with him? You better believe it. Here's another example of old technology that evolved and it's still being used today. The telephone. We all know the story about how people use the phone to communicate from a far distance. If you weren't that far, say a hundred feet from another person, you would have used cans, tied string knots on the ends of both cans, and would test it out on the street. It was an effective way for people to communicate softly without constantly disturbing the peace. This eventually inspired Alexander Graham Bell to create a technological device that would enhance communication beyond mail. Bell and an experienced electrical designer named Thomas A. Watson made history when sounds were being picked up after one read was experimented with. Today we have all sorts of telephones, whether they are cordless telephones, telephones that require you to communicate to an operator, corded telephones, which I grew up using in the 90s, and pay phones. The infamous of all of them, the cell phone. Why do I hate cell phones? People use them way too much even on social calls. Because of it, there is so much drama. When the cell phones evolved, there came features on a cell phone which dubbed the current generation called the smartphone. Why do I refuse to buy a cell phone? Number one, drama. I don't want to hear people griping, crying, threatening, or stalking me while I'm on the road taking care of things. Number two, they cost a ton of money. How can anyone conform to that lifestyle of using minutes that are unnecessary? Social calls are good only on a pay phone or a home phone. Number three, people do not use cell phones for emergencies only, and that is a critical thing. However, the companies that provide you the service expects you to use those minutes, or they become worthless. It's a very vicious cycle with cell phones. Now to another form of technology that has been around for so long that going into details on who pioneered the mailing system would take too long. Mail. The oldest form of outside communication in world history. Long before the invention of the telephone, social networking, and all that other good mess, mail was the only way of communicating to an individual far away. A lot less drama back then. Granted, it would take weeks, months, or even years. It was a very good way of keeping up with people and it was dirt cheap to mail things. Mail was very effective until the beginning of the 21st century. That was when electronic mailing, which is exclusive to the internet, sped up communications with people that were new to the modern technology world. However, certain things you cannot get physically from the internet, so mail still applies even though it is a struggling business. Now to the saddest part about the whole technological things of life, reading. In school, they encourage and sometimes force you to read things you do not like. For example, many teachers made me read fiction, even though I was more of a non-fiction type of guy. For example, I read biographies on Walt Disney, Andy Rooney, Bob Barker, Walter Cronkite, Walter Matthau, etc. I've read books on numismatics, which my commentary is, is, is still on V-Streamers, if you care to see that video. A lot of these books I read before I bought my first computer and got access to the internet. You see, social media has a way of insulting the integrity and intelligence of American people. That insult, in my opinion, became known as electronic books. They weren't big in 1999 with Cybook Gen 1, 
as they are with Amazon Kindle and Barnes & Noble Nook. It changed the way people read novels, articles, and other stuff that I don't care about. Why don't I care about ebooks? Like cell phones, ebooks cost a lot of money and they don't last long. Most of my research does come from the internet because of constant updates and new information. That's the good part about the internet. The bad part is that certain information we look for does not exist as of yet, but somehow you can find certain information in a book that could explain what another person is talking about. The reason why I prefer real books over ebooks is because of the value of real books have. Real books are slowly being obsolete thanks to social media and environmentalists that want to conserve every tree. I could rant about environmentalists, but it's irrelevant to this episode. Old school cookbooks that call for saturated fats like real butter, lard, milk, beef drippings after cooking meat makes it seem like we are living in a different generation. You may not find the original, but the copies still carry more value even if the grid goes down. What about a book on numismatics? Some people can learn how numismatics works despite the fluctuation of the value of the dollar. Real books are what children need to expand their vocabulary and function in society. I could talk about television, but television itself is not evil. It's actually social media that's evil. Do I, do I blame social media for butchering the most basic form of technology like books? Yes. Not necessarily the novels, but for shoving garbage down the throats of my generation. Cookbooks were huge back in my mother's day, my grandmother's day, and any other generation preceding them. My brother can cook, my sister can cook, and I can very well cook a good meal. The problem is that when social media told people how to live their lives in their house and encouraged them to go to fast food places, cookbooks became obsolete in America. In other countries, cookbooks are still big business because people in other nations are smart enough to pass on a time-honored tradition to another generation. That's why I would rather invest in a cookbook in case the grid goes down. Finally, we talk about one more thing that is slowly becoming obsolete. Supplies. Not building supplies, but your basic pen, paper, binder, folder, and all that other stuff that kids used to use in school. Why does this make me sad? Because a lot of schools in America are implementing more modern technology over old technology. Paper has been used for thousands of years. It is considered to be the oldest form of technology that is still used but not as often thanks to social media and environmentalists once again. Who knows about the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution? Anyone? They are not just 238-year-old pieces of paper. They are historical documents that guaranteed our rights in this country. Did Thomas Jefferson use a smartphone to write the Declaration of Independence? No. Did James Madison use a smartphone to elaborate on the purpose of the United States Constitution? No. So why are we wasting money on things like an e-tablet, e-book, and other stupid things that would easily malfunction even if you try to take care of it? Television and computers have evolved so much that repair shops are out of business. What is my stance on technology in general? I prefer a desktop computer over a laptop. I prefer a home phone over a cell phone, and that's it. Pretty much basically it. Anyway, this is Berg Productions with an episode of an educational series.